You would think when we're talking about breast pumping, stronger would be better. But before you put the pedal to the metal, you should be aware that there are risks to doing that. When we are talking about breast pump power, that suction or vacuum is documented as millimeters of mercury, or the abbreviation MMHG, which is the standard user me measurement unit of vacuum pressures. Studies were done on babies sucking at the breast and breast pump levels were based off of that how we know babies move milk from the breast. The suction level or vacuum is different than the cycle speed, which is how fast it pumps. This is why good breast pumps have two different settings that should be able to be changed based on your unique body and how you respond to the pump. They should have cycle, which is the speed, and vacuum, which is the strength. Most pumps will cycle between 40 to 70 cycles per minute, which is based off of how many times a baby sucks across the breast in the same amount of time. The vacuum is determined by a much more complex method. Breast pump effectiveness is evaluated by measuring the vacuum, also called suction of the pump, with a pressure gauge, an instrument that measures negative pressure. The gauge needle points to a number from 0 to 450 millimeters of mercury. The gauge measures the vacuum and not the speed of the pump. When there is a question about a pump's performance, the concern is usually about the vacuum strength, not always, but usually. Each breast pump has been manufactured to have specific pressures based off of that unique pump. When assessing different pumps, the reading on the gauge is then compared to the standard range for that individual breast pump that is being tested to determine whether the pump is performing per the manufacturer's guidelines or not. When you purchase a breast pump, the millimeters of mercury is very important to pay attention to. Based on known research for the vacuum babies can generate at the breast to remove milk, the pressure levels should be in a similar range to have a good quality pump move milk like your baby does. That range should be 220 to 350 millimeters of mercury. This number is the maximum suction level that the specific pump can achieve. Hospital grade pumps generally have a maximum suction level in the 300 range, while personal grade pumps generally are in the 200 grade range. This doesn't necessarily make a pump better or worse. Hospital grade pumps typically have bigger, stronger motors and they're bigger pumps because they're designed for multiple users and to be used long term. Personal pumps are usually much smaller, they're designed for one person, and they have a shelf life or a guarantee warranty on that motor of about two to three years, which would be the length of time that most people will breastfeed their baby. Breast pump suction is supposed to mimic how a baby sucks at the breast. Babies suck at the breast in different ways in order to either trigger milk to be made and let down or to remove that milk. The two primary phases that babies do are letdown and expression or moving milk. Letdown phase mimics when a baby is vigorously sucking at the beginning of a feeding or at different points throughout the feeding in order to try to stimulate additional letdowns. Babies can trigger anywhere from two to nine letdowns in any given feeding. The letdown phase stimulates the nerves in your nipples, which signal the release of oxytocin, the hormone responsible for letting down your milk. The release of oxytocin contracts the small muscles that surround your milk producing tissue, which squeezes milk into your ducts and down to the nipple where it was removed by the baby. Many babies will still stay in this vigorous phase for about one to two minutes or until they trigger your letdown. The expression phase is when a baby's sucking slows down and they are swallowing to remove all of the milk that was let down from the breast. Many babies stay in this phase for anywhere from four to eight minutes. This is the amount of time it takes to reset the letdown phase by resetting your hormone release of oxytocin. It is not true that higher suction is better suction. It is not true that higher suction will make more milk. In fact, the highest suction level on a breast pump is usually above the comfort zone of the majority of people that are pumping. So even if the breast pump has a maximum suction level of 350 millimeters of mercury, most will still feel more comfortable expressing in the range of 150 to 220 milligrams per mercury, regardless of whether the maximum is higher than that.
Pumping at too high of a suction level can actually hinder your milk flow and increase the risk of plug ducts, mastitis, and damage to the breast and nipple. Think of it like drinking a juice box from a straw. With really hard sucking, that juice box is going to collapse and not allow as much juice to flow because there's a vacuum effect that happens within the straw. You may get um, initially more suction speed of that juice, but you'll actually get less flow. You get more juice by doing a gentle, consistent suck on that straw. Milk ducts are also small, compressible glandular tissue that start at the back of the breast. They're like little tubes that start bigger at the back and narrow down as they get closer to the nipple. These milk ducts are actually quite compressible. So too much breast pump suction compresses your areolar tissue, which squeezes the duct and actually decreases the flow of milk and increases the risk that that milk is going to back up in the ducts behind it. With this, that can cause your milk to back up and increase your risk of plugged ducts. And it also factors, increases the risk of inflammation and damage. When milk is not efficiently emptied and removed with time, milk supply also drops. So why do you feel like you need to turn the suction all the way up on your pump in order to be able to move milk? The number one reason I see for this is because you're using the wrong size flange. The flange that comes with most standard pumps is a 24 or 25 millimeter flange. This was standardized many years ago and really not much has changed. What I found in my experience is that the majority of people actually need to go smaller. The flange fit is determined by your nipple diameter and not your breast size. You want a flange that fits well, feels comfortable, and efficiently moves your milk. When you have a flange that's too big, the pump has to create a lot of negative pressure in order to move your tissue in that flange to move milk. So many people who are using too large of a flange feel that they have to have the suction all the way to the top in order to get milk to move. That's a flange fit issue. Most people find that when they have the correct size, which can be quite small, the pump doesn't need as much suction in order to move breast tissue to effectively move your milk. So pumping at a higher level um, or feeling that you need to pump at a higher level can be an indication that you're using the wrong size flange. It's usually not possible to know ahead of time what cycle speeds and vacuum settings will work best for you. Your pumping experience is as individual as you as a person. Everyone's anatomy is unique and your sensitivity to a pump is individual. What works for one person may not necessarily work for the next. Those with nipple sensitivity may need a softer, gentler pump that cycles slower and has less vacuum whereas others may have larger breasts with longer nerve pathways that need to have stronger cycles and suction vacuum in order to be able to stimulate letdown. When considering a breast pump, the most important thing is having a pump that gives you the most flexibility to adjust cycle and vacuum to find the settings that work best to trigger you and your unique letdown. If you're buying a hospital grade pump because you know you're going to be frequently pumping at work or you may be exclusively pumping, maybe you have a NICU baby where their length of stay is going to be quite long, you want to look for a maximum vacuum strength above 300 millimeters of mercury. Most hospital grade pumps on the market will top out at 320 to 350 millimeters of mercury. If a breast pump is marketed as hospital grade, and the maximum suction level is listed below 300 millimeters of mercury, you should take more close, uh, more close look at the technical specifications and compare them to other hospital grade pumps on the market before considering buying it. If you're buying a personal grade breast pump, look for a maximum breast suction level of 250 to 300 milliliter, millimeters of mercury. The majority of personal grade electrical breast pumps on the market fall within this range. If the vacuum strength tops out at below 250 millimeters of mercury, it usually means it has a weaker motor. It may still set, stimulate a small percentage of pumpers, especially in the early days postpartum, when it is easiest to trigger letdowns and your body is relying on lots of hormones, it knows it had a baby. But it may not be strong enough for long-term pumping. 
You should look more closely at the technical specifications before buying a breast pump like this because a weaker motor means the motor has to work harder to perform at the same level as other personal grade hospital pumps. These pumps also tend to wear out much faster if you're doing any more than just occasional use. Now you know all there is to know about vacuum on your breast pump. Happy pumping!